um, some of the most. Uh, all right, okay. Where we bring to you some of the most interesting topics on critical care and emergency uh, sonography. So let's begin with recitation of Al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Okay, before we proceed, um, allow me to introduce our esteemed speaker, Dr. Uh, Cho Yaki is a pediatric intensivist at Sarawak General Hospital. He is an instructor of a World Interactive Network focus on critical care, critical ultrasound or wind focus. He is also one of the instructors for pediatric emergency and critical care uh, ultrasound support or PERCAS. So um, the topic for today's CME is the puffer fish phenomenon. Uh, I wonder what, what that is. So um, without further ado, I pass the mic to, uh, to, to our kind presenter. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, there's some interruption. <laughs> right, yeah. I, uh, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, uh, thank you, everyone, for giving me the chance uh, to share with you uh, the topics uh, for the for today. Yeah, the topic for today will be the puffer fish uh, phenomenon. Allow me to share my slide first. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Yep. Can see. Great. Great. Okay. Please let me know if there's some uh, things that I mean that the video didn't play. Yeah. And uh, or or uh, you got any question? Uh, please stop me. Yeah. So today's session will be a will be a light and easy one. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I say is light and easy one because there's no much of uh, evidence base uh, that I'm going to present. Yeah. It's more so towards like day-to-day uh, -day clinical practice. How are you? How 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 am I? Uh, how how did I use ultrasound in my day-to-day -day practice, uh, especially in terms of the lung ultrasound? Yeah, as you see that um why why the the topic of pufferfish phenomenon, right? Because um as you could imagine that uh, if you imagine the lung a good lung, which is a few with air, yeah, it's supposed to be well expanded. Uh, like uh, like you could see from this uh, uh what do you call that? Uh, let me later. Uh -huh. okay. Like on see on this uh, uh puffer fish, right? We we want the the lung to be always being puffed up, rather than in the deflate form. Okay, when the lung in the in the deflate form, uh, usually you encounter a diseased lung, right? So we we would like the lung uh, to be always be well inflated, especially at the alveolar level, whereby uh, your gas exchange. Uh, will be uh, optimum. And um, the, the basic topic will be the role of ultrasound uh, in the lung recruitment. So this is the outline that we're going to discuss. Um, we're going to revise a bit of basic lung ultrasound and a little bit of one or two of evidence of lung ultrasound in recruitment. I think uh, more interestingly, we will be going to see uh, five different cases that I encounter and um, how I, I use the lung ultrasound to guide me in terms of uh, manage and this patient. And this setting is very, very much in the uh, ICU setting. Right? I hope that uh, uh, it can be uh, used in uh, uh, anywhere and elsewhere as well, because some of the most of the evidence of this recruitment strategy is actually based on anesthesiology. Right? So seeing is believing. I am so I'm sure that we all are ultrasound crazy. Huh? So um, once you start to have ultrasound, and uh, when you see some things beside the clinical judgments, and then you assure yourself that um, you are actually uh, going into the right track. As you see that this is actually an ultrasound lung image, yeah, a lung image that with a collapsed lung, the collapsed lung actually swim in the massive pleural effusion, right? So the shape of the lung is basically quite mimic a fish, right? So that's why this is a 
a deflated uh, puffer fish. Right? And you can actually you can differentiate the different looks of the lung here. This is the right part of the right upper loop. This is the middle loop. And this is the lower loop. Okay. And very importantly is that you have to be believe what you are seeing. In order to do that, in order to believe what you are seeing, we ought to know what actually the thing that we are seeing. So knowing the actual sonar anatomy is, is, is very, very important. So that, um, especially so when, you, uh, when we start, I'm sure that we all have the same experience when we initially we start ultrasound, doing ultrasound in patients. We tend to see things and tend to see a lot of things. And uh, this sometimes, a lot of things can sometimes, uh, for, for me especially, and brought me into some trouble because I tend to over-diagnose things. But, but it's interestingly that once uh, we did more uh, and then subsequently the experience come and then you get more confidence and then the, the mistake will be lessened. Yeah. But, uh, you could see that this is like, a, you know, the Pac-Man goes. Yeah. Similarly, this is an ultrasound image uh, of the collapsed lung in the massive tubular effusion that creates a, 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 a Pac-Man ghost uh, like you will see just now. Yeah. Doing ultrasound with Pac-Man because we are seeing the structure itself, right? To see the structure, we probably have to see the structure with an eager eye, which means you need to see the, the whatever images that produced by the ultrasound, very detailed, and um, and also looking at the specific uh, pathology that we are we are aiming for, as you could remember that point of care ultrasound is not to let us to become a radiologist. We are focusing on the focus thing that we want to see, what we want to look at, like an eagle flying in the sky. Their focus is on the on the prey on the ground. So when you do the focus ultrasound, we would like to see the prey, huh? the whatever focus or the certain specific answer that, that we want to resolve with ultrasound. This is basically a, a ultrasound of the lung. Okay? The patient actually lying prone. Right? And then whatever you see here is actually the vertebra. Then this is a spinous processes. And this is a, uh, the other side of the peduncle. Centrally is basically is the spinal cord. And both sides, here is actually uh, part of the uh, thoracic cage. And then whatever you see here is actually a posterior aspect of the lung. Okay? We show you that some degree of consolidation okay? and also a confluence B line. Okay? It look like an eager eye uh, from here. And what our interest today is that more or less is the same thing. We would like to make this uh, deflated Puffer fish, which is a collapsed lung or collapsed alveoli, whichever that you are seeing, into a well inflated puffer fish. As you could see here, the lung are fully inflated uh, without any effusion, without any lung collapse. Okay, so this is the main topics that we are going to talk about. Before we begin, and in order to inflate the lung, there are a few situations uh, whereby the lung can be inflated. The three important situation is the condition we call uh, uh, the pulmonary edema or inflammatory inflammation of the lung and as well as lung collapse. Okay, we go through one by one, just do some a little bit of revisions. Right? So as you say that pulmonary edema is basically free in the lung. And you could see that the progressions of the x-ray as shown above. So this is a normal x-ray. Okay. When the, when the lung free become more, the appearance will become uh, uh, as such huh? with, with pulmonary congestions over this side. And then you could see that the, 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 the transverse fissure here. And it get worse, that's the changes will be progressed as such. As we know that pulmonary edema is basically water in the lung. One had to imagine that uh, the water in the lung is something like a rain in the lung. Okay. So these are corresponding pictures of the raining pattern in the lung. So if you are well edited lung, you could see aureola, okay? Yeah, well sky, clear sky, and then you could see aureola, everything is fine and no rain. So when you have some degree of pulmonary edema, they're going to have a few drops of rain, okay? And when the disease progress, 
the rain become more and become raining cat and dog. So this kind of pattern can be well seen in ultrasound lung as well. As you could see here, so this is a normal lung. You, could, you, are, you are seeing the layer or layer of your line, which is your A line. And then once the water starts to become more, you're actually seeing the water drop, yeah? or we call it a B line. A water drop drop down from the pure, from a pure lining. When the water become more, when the pulmonary getting more, pulmonary edema getting more serious, okay, you could see more and more water drop. And no doubt, when the head rain is very heavy, the lung is full of free, and you got pulmonary edema uh, patterns, as you could see a confluence B line here. So this type of sequence is very important for us when we recruit the lung, or when we treat the patient, right? So if, if the patient's lung ultrasound progress from the left end to the right end, you know that the patient is going to trouble the lung, huh? the lung is flooding. But when we do a recruitment strategy or you want to treat the patient when the lung getting drier, so you're going to get the pattern from the right side to the left, okay? So this is the pattern that you're going to see in terms of recruitment in pulmonary edema. The second important uh, strategy, uh, pathology that uh, always uh, associated with uh, 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 a lung collapse or lung uh, infiltration, so is a uh, pulmonary inf inflammation. Like for example, that we commonly appear in uh, acute bronchiolitis, pneumonia, or ARDS. Okay? So this is the x-ray patterns of the patient with consolidation. As you see earlier on, it's a normal lung. When the, there's some degree of bronchiolitis pattern, uh, sorry, I'm a pediatrician to talk more about the pediatric stuff. So we see that a lot of uh, more, uh, some, some degree of, um, a, uh, what do you call that, acute bronchiolitis pattern, you could going to see that uh, some pretty high light infiltration. And in fact, in pathological wise, you probably sometime from the ultrasound point of view, you're going to see some degree of subpural consolidation, like what appear in this uh, anatomical structure here. Right? So when the consolidation getting more, like for example, on this picture with a severe bronchial pneumonia, and whatever you see here from the pathology is basically a patches of the consolidation as you appear on this, okay? No doubt when the lung becomes solidified huh, in a severe lobar pneumonia, your whole lung will going to become a liver-like, what we call it hepatization. And this kind of pattern is, as you as you all well aware, is also appear in terms of lung ultrasound. And so as you see, this is a normal lung ultrasound finding. When you have small little subpular consolidation, yes, you're going to see a small little subpular consolidation uh, corresponding to the ultrasound lung. And when the consolidation become more adhesive together and the size is become bigger, and you could see that this is what we call a Shrek sign. Huh? I like to say that this is a Koyak sign. Why you always use English? We should use some Malay also. also. It's a Koyak sign, which is sound better. Huh? So this is a, a consolidation, right? So when, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the lung become more solid, okay, we're going to have a solid lung, as you see from this pattern. And you could see that the, the whole lung becomes solidified, okay? and you could even see the transverse fissure here. And then you can see that some uh, bronchogram, air bronchogram pictures. Okay? So this air bronchogram picture is very important for, to help us to differentiate whether it's a consolidation or it's a lung collapse. Okay? Right. So you could see that this is a, a, with an air bronchogram. Okay? Right, because the subsequent pictures going to see is total lung collapse. Then you can appreciate the changes. So when we look at the, the lung pathology patterns, okay. So from moving from the left to the right, you're going to see the, the, the disease pattern become worse and worse, okay. And because of this uh, image that readily reproducible, so in terms of lung recruitment mice, we can actually able to see the progress of the consolidation moving uh, the, the, uh, the recruitment able to move from the right side to the left when we when when our strategy or recruitment becomes success okay the third pathology that we are uh, that could be a recruit it will be a lung collapse okay as we discussed earlier on there's a uh, this is a what do you call it okay so this is a, a pictures of the total lung collapse no? because this is a ultrasound lung showing that the total right lung collapse as, uh, as compared to the just now consolidations pattern you could not even see any air bronchogram. There's a small little one here, but then there's no air bronchogram here. Bronchogram here. Uh, this picture actually suggests of uh, lung collapse. Uh, similarly here, you can't see much of air bronchogram, but what you could see here is the, con the, the lung collapse, whereby uh, it, be it become a, a, a homogeneous, more homogeneous appearance. Okay. 
So this three pathology is uh, 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 is uh, uh, sometimes it's a, it's, a, it's a pathology that we can use it uh, to recruit the lung. When we try to recruit the lung, we will probably cannot go away from this uh, pressure volume uh, pressure volume curve. Okay, as we, as we know that uh, when uh, the, the, this is a normal patterns of the pressure volume curve. Sometimes when you inflate the lung at a different pressure. Okay, so this is a, a, for example for the collapsed lung to be occur here. So when you do not inflate the lung, okay, the lung is basically collapsed up. Okay, so when pressures gradually increase, okay, the, but the lung did not really inflate it until we we reach this opening pressure. So after lung opening pressure achieved, there's more they start to have aeration. Okay, so the aeration occur means that the pathology of lung, the, the in terms of anatomical wise, the lung will be gradually inflated until the end of overinflation. Okay, the time that we reduce the pressure, okay, when the pressure reduce, okay, the 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 lung when the when the pressure reach down the closing uh, uh, closing pressure, then only the lung will subsequently start to deflate. Okay, so this is in terms of the pathological appearance or, or or normal physiological appearance of how recruitment can be done. Okay. So looking at it is that uh, only if we can have a dynamic uh, lung chest x-ray, chest x-ray of the lung, then only you can see the changes from this pattern to this pattern. But as you all aware that we cannot have a dynamic uh, lung, uh, chest x-ray or lung like this. Huh? But what we have is that we have a lung ultrasound, we can, which we can do anytime and real time and also can monitor the lung recruitment strategy and how are we going to... Uh, uh, a strategy or inflate the lung accordingly based on this pressure volume curve. And this pressure volume curve corresponding of x-ray, uh, corresponding of the ultrasound images can be shown here, okay? As you could see that over the lower end, okay, there is a significant consolidated lung which is not open up, okay, not aerated, okay? When the aeration start to come in, when the opening pressure start to come in, all right, you could see that the lung over this side is start to be aerated a little bit. You could see that there's some, uh, some uh, B line up here rather than a hepatization. Okay. So the pressure gradually in increase. You're going to see that the confluence airline start to appear because the lungs start to be inflated, right, with the air. And once it's fully aerated, okay, you could see that this kind of pattern appear, right? And once over descended, sometimes you can't see much already. Huh? So sometimes the pure line, the 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 what do you call that, the, the sliding sign can be lost. Okay. And as, as we reduce the pressure, okay, so when you when you start to reach the closing pressure, you're going to start to see some B line occur, and then subsequently more confluence B line and collapse back. Okay, so this is a very nice patterns of recruitment, the uh, nice pattern of lung pressure volume curve images that you could reproduce from the ultrasound image. So this is a very important tool that we have in order to help us in terms of recruitment. Passman have uh, described it quite nicely in uh, 2016 in the way that how he recruit lung using lung ultrasound. Okay, yeah. So this is a, the the protocol that uh, he have created. Okay, how he recruited the lung uh, at that side in real time and deciding the opening and closing pressure using the ultrasound. Okay, so the the patient that recruited with the evidence of lung collapse. Okay, then if the hemodynamic stable, then he will go through this kind of um, uh, call it recruitment pattern, recruit, recruit, recruitment maneuver, and also recruitment maneuver. And in his article, he actually show quite a similar pattern that I have been demonstrated to you. Okay, when you have a patient with a collapsed lung with some degree of consolidation, the opening pressure will great. Uh, the 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 PEP the pressure will gradually increase, right? Gradually, as you could see here, the consolidation gradually reduce. The yeah? consolidation gradually reduce until the end whereby this opening pressure occur. You could see here, the when you reach the opening pressure, the lung will be very well aerated. Huh? The number of the consolidation gradually disappeared and appear with the B line, and then after that, the B line disappeared. So when the pressure start to come down, okay, right, the similar patterns come back again. Huh? So we have um, a B line appear, subsequently more conference B line, and until when the, when the crossing pressure reach, then you're going to see that consolidation, uh, subtural consolidation start to come back. Okay, so this is a very important clinical, uh, what do you call that, ultrasound images that can be produced. So I'm going to share with you my journey, right? my journey of using lung ultrasound in recruitment. As we all know, uh, when you're studying the lung ultrasound, we, we all have 
uh, what do you call that, a learning curve, right? <laughs> As I mentioned to you earlier, we have our learning curve and then sometimes we make a lot of mistakes, sometimes we make a lot of misdiagnosis. I just want to share with you uh, my journey, okay? We started with a case one, the naive and uh, in inexperienced mind that I have, okay? Let's show you one of the cases. Okay? So this is a child with uh, Down syndrome, okay? Coming with uh, acute bronchiolitis, we subsequently developed a, a bacterial pneumonia. Okay, All right, uh, and he's going into problem of ventilation because um, the the this lung is quite solid. Okay, we are not able to uh, ventilate well. Difficult to oxygenate. Okay, and we did a lung ultrasound. Okay, anteriorly not much of problem, but when you flip the child back posteriorly, okay, so this is what you see. Okay, so this is child lying on prone sagittal view. Okay. So this is the left side of the lung. As you could see, this is a rib cage, the, the, the rib shadow. And you could see that the lung actually consolidated, a significant consolidation. And you could see that uh, significant lung pulse. Yeah, the lung is actually pulsating. Similarly, over the right side, okay, you could see that some air bronchogram, significant consolidation, okay, and lung pulse as well. So this is done, uh, what do you call that, uh, 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 surgically, okay? okay. Because of the rib cage, sometimes obscure, your images, right? So sometimes I prefer do it transversely. So when you do the ultrasound scan transversely, you're going to get rid of the ribs, okay? The, uh, the shadowing of the ribs. Then you could see that the lung image much more clearer. And then the, the area that you scan actually much more broader. Huh? So it, which means that you're going to have two dimensions of scanning. One is digital and one is transverse, okay? Here is the transverse scan. You could see that the midline structure here is actually the, the vertebra, okay? So this is at the, at the part of uh, the area, the consolidation actually occur mainly at the vertebra area, huh? part of vertebra area, okay? The lung adjacent to the vertebra, okay? So this is the left side of the lung. So this is the right side of the lung. Similarly, it occur, this occur at the part of vertebra area. So anteriorly, the child is fine. So hence, we put the child on prone, okay? And we ventilate the patient on the prone position, okay? Notice that 24 hours after that, okay, you could see that, okay, the, the lung actually much more aerated. Huh? You could see now, you could see the uh, air line now appear in, in this image, okay, posteriorly, okay, on the, the left side. This is uh, on the right side, posteriorly, okay. And then similarly, this transverse view, you could, you could no longer see the consolidation of this side, and this side also has been opened up, okay. Notice that this is after 24 hours because initially, my thought that, oh, okay, lung recruitment, poopy, uh, this child is not stable, okay? The, the, the recruitment might take a longer time. Hence, the scan was actually repeated 24 hours later and then they see the changes, okay? So that is, was a young me. Huh? In the case two, the time when I get more confidence, I know that, oh, poopy, it, not necessarily the, 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 the aeration only occur after a long period of time. It might become uh, even faster. Just want to show you the second case, okay? So this is a child, okay? It's a four years old child, presented with a crook like features, okay? It's a crook like features, unfortunately, it's a bit different, okay? Because most of the time, when you say that a child having crooks, most of the time, we are so called uh, happy buck, uh, happy bucking cough. We usually have happy bucking cough, right? Despite the uh, bucking cough, they put Although you get a degree of suprasternal recession, a bit of subtle area, they are really relatively less sick as compared to this child. Uh, this child is really very, very sick. You see, he can stride off, okay? <laughs> as well, high grade temperature, right? With that, because I got scared because, because of the airway problem, knowing that uh, the significant stride off as this pattern, right? I worry about the airway problem. So this child was, was brought to uh, so then we process of intubation. Okay, we, we, we did have a guy scope uh, uh, using a max scanning. You can see that this is a vocal cord very nicely screened. Okay, and then problem the anesthetists have problem of pushing in the tube. Okay, eventually the tube went in. So the, you look carefully the moment that the tube went in. There's a lot of significant uh, yellowy secretions come out. Okay, so this is a pattern where obstructed breathing pattern, whereby you see that the the lalling actually tucked down. Huh? It's a tucked down pattern. Okay, suggestive of very significant obstruction, 
and the, the child has significantly subglottic narrowing, okay, whereby the anesthetic adding difficulty in pushing the tube. Eventually, when you push in, you can see the tube there actually have a significant uh, amount of secretion that come out. This child basically, subsequently, uh, the ENT surgeon went down to scope down. Actually, he had very severe tracheitis. The tracheitis and also some degree of subglottic uh, uh, narrowing because of the severe inflammation, right? And um, uh, the significant uh, uh, pass come out uh, from, from the ETT suction. And this is the x-ray that uh, we have post-op, yeah. And then looking at the pattern is severely patchy opacity generalized. And, uh, and when you come back, the, when the patient come back from OT, you're actually having a lot of problem on ventilation, ventilating this child. By looking at the x-ray, okay, one might, might be wonder where is the lesion, where is the problem? Because we are ventilating the patient is a very high pressure patient is a supine position. Right? You can't really generate a good tidal volume and then the patient uh, continues to be deset and, uh, and unable to maintain saturation. So ultrasound is very helpful for us to determine where is the problem. Okay? So this is the anterior view anterior view of the lung, okay? As you could see that anterior right, anterior left, okay? And it, and it is not as bad as what you could see on the x-ray, right? In x-ray just now, you could see that both sides of the lung is actually wide up. But over here, you could see that the lung, uh, the lung field actually not too bad. You could see some air lines, uh, uh, despite of the conference V line that you see here, okay? So this means that not so much of consolidation occur, uh, in the anterior, as what the, when you look at the lung, you see, you, uh, x ray, you thought that the whole lung is involved. Uh, but then, yeah, when you see on this ultrasound lung, actually, you notice that it's basically is anteriorly aspect is literally spare. Okay. How about posteriorly? Now the issue comes. Yes. So the lesion actually predominantly at the posterior aspect of the lung. Okay. So this is something that sometimes. A quick radiologist will tell you that yes, from the X-ray point of view, you know that uh, there is posterior lung involvement. Okay, the pathology is mainly at posterior, uh, but that is a good eye with the radiologist. Huh? But with the point of care ultrasound of the lung, you can actually uh, tell us more confidently, right? Where is the lesion? Okay, because we want to our treatment strategy, our ventilator strategy is very much depending on where is uh, the site of the problem, uh, because knowing the site of the problem we can do positioning in order to aerate it to recruit the lung appropriately. Okay, so as you could see that now, it's con significant consolidation over the post aspect and bilaterally. So with that in mind, you knowing that the the lesion is basically a posterior, hence the strategy will be prone the child. Okay, hmm. so we prone the child. Okay, put the child in prone position in order to recruit the posterior aspect of the lung. And we put on a strategy, we do a bilevel ventilation because we know that the child needs a certain degree of high pressure in order to recruit the lung. So we try on the bilevel ventilation, we subsequently improve the situation. This time round, I didn't wait for 24 hours, okay? The lung actually recruited within seven hours, okay? So it's actually a, a third a two third reduction of the timing for me to become more confidently thinking, uh, saying that uh, the, the lung can be recruited fast, all right? So this is seven hour post prone position, okay? Right up below, you could see that very well aerated, okay? As compared to earlier on. And ventilator strategy become much better. And then the child managed to go on a lower setting subsequently. So this is the x-ray after we, we prone the patient recruited. As you could see now, the lung is actually much more aerated. Huh? This is actually a picture taken on prone, okay? You could see that the, the lung much more aerated as compared to earlier x-ray as, as you could see here, okay? Very, very consolidated. And this is very much well aerated. Case number three, right? When things get better, I uh, feel a bit more confidence, okay? Right? Uh, and um, could be seven hours is maybe a bit long. <laughs> so then we try on another patient, okay? So this is another one, young, young, young infant, okay? About one month plus with significant uh, severe pneumonia, okay, right? As you could see that, uh, this, uh, this is the x-ray of the patient, okay? So you have generalized ground class appearance, okay? With some opacity over this side and over this side as well, okay? Similarly, very difficult to oxygenate, okay? Right, we, we need to prone the patients, okay? 
uh, for ventilation. And also at the same time, it, the child is on high frequency uh, ventilation. Okay. And uh, that, that, that tell you how significant the, 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 consult, the, the lung pathology is. So this is an ultrasound lung that uh, we, we, we take to, uh, to, to see the, 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 the pathology. Yes, the pathology is basically a posterior, as you remember just now. So this is a lung ultrasound done on the prone patient. Okay? Whatever you see here in the midline is actually the spine. So this is a spine. Okay? And laterally, you could see that part of the lung field here. Okay? Part of the lung field here. Right? So there's significant consolidation bilaterally. Okay? And you can see that there's a dynamic air bronchogram. You can see that the, the, the secretion uh, in the lung is actually moving. Okay? This child is on high frequency. Hence, you could see that the lung is actually shaking as per high frequency. Okay? Right? And you could see the significant uh, conference B line after that. Okay? And also the lung pulse. Huh? It's here you could see the lung pulse. Okay? So this is under zero minutes. Okay. At the zero minutes of the lung recruitment, whereby we put out the MAP uh, to 18, from 18 to 26, okay? So this is MAP of, from 18 earlier on. Okay, this is MAP of 18 earlier on. And then we increase the MAP to 26 in order to recruit the lung, okay? And as you could see that within three minutes, okay? I'm so happy it occurred within three minutes, okay? From these changes, okay? From the MAP of 18, we push up to 26. And it appear to a situation like this. As you remember, just now we discussed the inflammatory changes. Okay, so these are changes from a consolidated lung from the C go to a B2 now. Okay, it's more elevated now, but it's a conference B line. But there's still some degree of consolidation and these beats. Okay, so this is only after three minutes. And this is 10 minutes after recruitment. As you could see, that the small little eye. The eye has start to disappear. Okay, you could see that more conference B line, right? Okay, over here, right? More conference B line, more conference B line. Okay, lung are more much more aerated. Okay, yeah, and this is after thirty minutes of recruitment. You could see that, yeah, it's relatively more aerated as compared to earlier. And finally, this is at sixty minutes. Okay, within one hour time, the lung actually much more aerated. As you could notice very carefully, now you are starting to see an A line over here, right? Start to see the A line over here. It means the aeration is much, much more better now, okay? From the MAP of 18 at the zero minutes with consolidation, okay? To a period of only one hour of recruitment. So this lung actually much more aerated, right? So this show you how ultrasound can be very helpful uh, for us to determine uh, whether the lung is recruited or not. So from here, we can know that the lung already recruited, okay? Then I can start to bring down my pressure in order to, in order to reduce the further damage. As you re remember that just now, our pressure is very high, okay? So when the pressure is very high, now we're already quite confident the lung is really quite well aerated already. We can actually bring down the pressure, use the lung damage, and hopefully the patient can be uh, much better after that. Okay, so this is how useful the ultrasound lung will help you in terms of lung recruitment in day-to-day -day practice. So this is another example, it's another case, okay, uh, to show you in a bigger child, to show you this is a patient on high frequency, high frequency with significant consolidation. You could see how the lung shake by the high frequency. This is a transverse view. You could observe the lung pulse with the dynamic air bronchogram here, okay. Four hours after that, the lung become aerated. Okay, very much well aerated here. You could see even the airline. Now you could see the airline over here. So after the recruitment already occur, then you can start to, to bring down the pressure in order to reduce the further lung damage. Not all are a success story. Okay, uh, when, when uh, we also encounter also encounter failure. Okay, so the failure sometimes. What does a failure mean? Which means the lung is not able to be recruited, right? We cannot recruit the lung because not all the lung pathology can be recruited, right? So there are certain lung disease which is not recruitable, right? So if, if one continue to recruit the unrecruitable lung, so which means we're going to cause more damage, okay? So once the recruitment manual fails, so one need to try off other strategies 
in order to help to improve the lung condition. So this is a young child with a very significant, huge uh, pattern ductus arteriosus, large PDA. The large is, is only about, uh, it's the x premi only about two kilo. The atrium was so large, large enough until, the left atrium was so large, large enough until it compressing the, the left main bronchus. So the left main bronchus is basically totally collapsed, okay? So this is a lung ultrasound I show you here, okay? So uh, uh, doing a linear probe, okay? Uh, transversely, as you can see that this lung is collapsed, okay? Uh, it's a collapse, collapsed lung, whereby you didn't see any air bronchogram, okay? Whatever you could see here, it observed here, basically the blood vessel, middle blood vessel here, the pulmonary blood vessel. And then this is a surgical view, as you could see that, this is a surgical view, uh, no air bronchogram, but significant con collapse, okay, with blood vessel. This uh, starting with, we try to recruit the lung, okay, with a, with a PIP titration, okay, not on a high frequency, but we're using a PIP titration. This is a PIP of egg, okay, with a PIP of egg, this is a persistent consolidation occur here. And we quick up the pressure a little bit, okay. Now we've increased the pressure to 10, 10 centimeter water. But unfortunately, with the 10 centimeter water, there's not much significant changes that can occur uh, that you can observe here. The lung still persistently uh, consolidated and collapsed. Okay. And we creep up the pressure some more up to 12. Okay. So despite our PEP of 12 centimeter, we fail to open up the lung. Okay. So that is very stressful because uh, this, if the lung is not able to open up, okay, and it will, it will cause significant problem because the oxygenation ventilation will be a big issue. So what to do when you don't know what to do? Had to try for think of any other way that you might improve. Knowing that this child uh, have uh, external compression that leading to this uh, lung collapse. Okay, so uh, sometimes a different strategy might work. So in this child, we actually do some uh, chest fissure and an inflation maneuver, and in order to open the lung. So we could uh, do do a good chest fissure and and a good suction with a uh, with certain maneuver, okay? As you could see that this is a persistent collapsed lung, okay? Similarly, like what we showed you earlier on, so this is a persistent collapsed lung. And then after a good physio, and then a suck, and also inflation maneuver and a suction, okay, this lung actually opening up, okay? Yeah, so it's open up after the good suction and a good maneuver, and uh, this the, the pathological area become open up. Okay, so that not necessarily the, 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 the deflation um, can be actually improved with recruitment. So we need to think of other way in order to recruit the lung in others, other means in other strategy. Huh? So you could see that now left a little bit of subpural consolidation with conference B line, as you can notice here. Case five uh, uh, is a very sleepless night. Okay, it's a very co uh, complex cases that uh, because one always had to be uh, open minded to see what is the cause, what is the cause of the lung collapse. Okay, uh, lung collapse itself or, uh, or or consolidated lung itself can be due to the lung pathology by per se by itself the lung pathology. Right? And then uh, the last case show you that uh, airway compression due to the external compression by the left atrium. And this in this child, this unfortunate child also show you a different pathology that can lead to uh, lung. Uh, lung collapse and how ultrasound lung can help you in, in, in order to uh, manage the child like that. Okay. So it's a, a very unfortunate child with a chronic pneumatic heart disease with a severe mitral regurgitation. Okay. And uh, coming quite sick with significant pulmonary hemorrhage because of the severe mitral regurgitation. Right? Uh, it's very torrential pulmonary hemorrhage. Okay. And fortunately, this child managed to went on to do a mitral valve repair. Okay. And post op, the child is basically quite quite well and a little bit well and cleaning lower ventilator support and also significantly low anotropic support. But unfortunately, about uh, forty eight hours post op, okay, the child uh, become unstable. Right, the reduced chest movement over the right side, okay, and start to desaturate and needing increasing anotropic support. So this is a chest X ray of the patient here. As you could see that. There's significantly right lung haziness over the over the right side. Okay, 
So what, what is the problem now? So what is the diagnosis of this opacity over the right side? Whether it be a consolidation, whether it be it a massive pure effusion, okay? Whether, whether it be it a pummy, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, significant hemothoraxes over this side, okay? So ultrasound basically can tell us what this is the diagnosis, okay? So when you do the ultrasound, this is the pattern that show, right? As you could see that we discussed earlier, consolidation difference from uh, collapse, okay? When, when you say that this lung has consolidation, which means that usually there is air from program. But as you could see here that this is a lower, lower right polexics, lower right hemithorax, this is upper right hemithorax, okay? At the lower hemithorax, you could see that this collapse over the lower loop, okay? And also collapse over the middle loop and part of the upper loop, okay? Significant collapse, lung collapse. Not so much of consolidation, as you see that there's not much of air bronchogram here. Whatever you could see here is blood vessel, okay? So given the history of this patient have uh, previously had pulmonary hemorrhage, okay? Now there's a significant lung collapse over the right side. Then this is most likely is a, a, a occlusion uh, at the bronchus, mainly by something. The something is basically is the blood, uh, because significant pulmonary hemorrhage, sometimes they may form clots in the, in the lung, in the main bronchus, that occluded that right main bronchus. So we, we, we try all sorts of manual, okay? Knowing that this is most likely is due to occlusion. We try all sorts of manual, doing lavage, doing aggressive chest tissue, doing, um, what do you call that? Um, brought in a cough assist device, trying to brought out the, 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 the plug, but unfortunately we failed. Right? The child still persistently. Uh, very unstable and very difficult to ventilate. So we we, bring, we brought in uh, our ENT surgeon who helped us to do a bronchoscope. As you could see that now entering the trachea, this is a carina, this is a right main bronchus. And you could see that there is a nice clots there, sitting there, that obstruct the right lung, okay? So for, from the ultrasound itself, okay, the ultrasound tells us that, all right, to the acute, Haziness over the right lung, okay, we can differentiate whether it's a consolidation, whether it's a foreign body that occlude the airway, right? So if there's a consolidation, our, our strategy will be recruit the particular lung, okay? In, uh, changing the uh, ventilator strategy, different type of ventilator strategy in order to open up the lung. But it is a mechanical problem like this, for example, right? So from, from, uh, from, the, from the blood clot, uh, clotting the uh, right main bronchus, okay? The treatment will be very simple. Just take up that particular area, the blockage, and then the, the, the finding will be uh, that the patient will improve other than, okay? So this show you how important the lung ultrasound because from, from chest x-ray point of view, you're not able to decide whether it's consolidation or whether it's lung collapse, okay? We can't bring down the child for CT scan, right? And um, lung ultrasound is the way to go, okay? So after remove, the particular uh, certain amount of the clots uh, from, from, the, from the lung, okay? We managed to aerate the lung now, okay? As you will see down, uh, it's very immediate effect, okay? After the, the consolidation, uh, uh, you will see that there is some significant consolidation here. And then now the right lower lobe become very, very well aerated, okay? And you could see that the significant X-ray changes, okay? So after the, although there's, despite there's some degree of segmental collapse here due to the residual clots that we have had, but now the rest of the lung is very, very much well aerated, okay? And you could see that this is a, the, uh, the, the CRT catheter that deviated to the right because of the collapsed lung. Now it become coming to the middle part because the lung was very, very, very well aerated. Other very important uh, things that we are uh, helping us to day-to-day -to -day practice is that the terminology, what we call a tidal recruitment. Tidal recruitment basically is uh, repeatedly open and closing a collapse of your line during the ventilator cycle. This is the thing that we do not want. Okay? When we ventilate patient, we do not want the lung or the alveolar to behave like this, open and close, open and close. So this open and closed lung pattern, this is alveolar, this is a history, this is a histopathology uh, appearance of the alveoli. Okay. And you could see that this alveoli open and close, open and close. There's no nothing to sustain the inflation. As, as, as we go through COVID uh, infection, we always think we, the, 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 what do you call that? The, <laughs> the, the, the term that we always want to say, 
or in, in patients with severe ARDS is that we want to let the lung open and then keep, we want to keep the lung open and never let it close. So it's a very important strategy. Keep the lung open and never let it close. Why? Because the moment that we allow the, the lung to be open and closed in this kind of manner, there's a lot of stretch, the, the stress pressure, yeah? a lot of stress, uh, what do you call it, a stress, uh, a stretching force that forcing onto the alveoli repeatedly. So this repeated stretching force into the lung, in, into the alveoli, will cut subsequently lead to lung damage and the alveolar injury, and then lead to uh, inflammation. And then subsequently, with the inflammation, we're can, going to cause more problems uh, in times to come. Okay? You might have a good situation in this early point view, whereby you can have very high, high pressure, high PIP, but relatively low PEP. This is what you're going to get it. The situation might improve for sure, huh? but when times go by a few hours later, then the lung going to have more damage, and then it's going to have more problem. Okay? I'm going to show you how, how the lung finding huh? from, from this kind of, how, how ultrasound lung to detect uh, basically the, there is a tidal, the problem of tidal recruitment. As you could see that, this kind of pattern, okay? So when you see the bright thing is actually the bronchus, okay? So when the bronchus fill with air, okay, then it become white. Deflated with air, become, uh, become very uh, black. Huh? So this is what appear uh, as a tidal, wall, tidal recruitment uh, in lung ultrasound, okay? Similarly as what you could get here, okay? So when you start to see that kind of, this kind of pattern appear when you do the ultrasound uh, in, in the patient, which means that you need to really tackle on your strategy in management of this child. If you, if you leave on the, 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 the breathing pattern as such a way, so you're actually going to cause more damage. So for this patient, by looking at this, we know that we need to take out the pure effusion. So we drain the pure effusion, okay? So because this drain pure effusion will cause significant external pressure that causing the lung to behave like this, okay? All right. So by draining the pure effusion, by inflating the lung, increasing the PEP, and then the lung will be much more well inflated and then uh, they will cause less lung damage. So this is another paper uh, published by Tasman as we uh, discussed earlier on the way that Tasman, how he recruited the lung. So this is uh, from a patient with 80, 68 years old, a patient with a, a tidal recruitment, as you see here, and def, uh, repeatedly inflating and deflating the lung. Okay. So when you recruit the lung, and then you can see that this is more happy lung over this side. This is another example. Sorry, this is another. Sorry, sorry. So this is another example here. A three years old child. Okay, a post appendix appendectomy. Okay, you could see that the uh, repeatedly open and closed lung over the side. Okay, when you recruit them and then the lung will be elevated, and can lead to less lung damage. Okay. So this is what we are talk about the basic lung ultrasound and some of the evidence of recruitment and the sharing of my journey. Okay. With that, I thank you. Okay, I'll open for question. Okay, let's open uh, the floor for question and question. You can either uh, put in the chat or you can you can just uh, ask directly. I've to put two questions in the chat box. So I think I'll ask directly as well, Dr. Cho. Uh, yeah, can, can. <laughs> Thank you very much for the great presentation. We do uh, the lung recruitment as well in the adult population. Uh, something similar to whatever you just presented. Uh, I just want to know, it, from the appearance of the ultrasound, is there a way that uh, we can identify this is a acute consolidation or is a chronic lung fibrosis? Because uh, usually the chronic uh, lung changes is difficult to recruit. So, uh, and that, that's related to the second question as well. So, uh, if you, you start the recruitment and you increase the PIP, uh, how high will you go until you give up that this is not a recruitable lung? So, uh, yeah, for, for the first question, lung fibrosis or lung consolidation is quite, quite difficult. Yeah, because as you know that uh, both are consolidated, both are, uh, uh, in order to differentiate, it's, it's quite significantly quite difficult. I, I do have a patient with uh, uh, bronchiolitis obitran, right? Uh, for those that bronchiolitis obitran, you, you could, uh, uh, there's a common uh, lung fibrosis that we encounter in pediatric. I know much experience in, in adult. Yeah. So in the patient with uh, 
Oncolitis obitrans, the, the, the very important features that we notice is that there are areas of hyperinflation on top of the on top of the the the, the, the changes, the fibrotic changes. And uh, the other important thing is that the pure thickening. In a lung, in a lung fibrosis pattern, a lot of times they have a significant pure thickening that differentiate the two, right? So and so which means that in the lung fibrosis, associated lung fibrosis, you should always have to see. Uh, associated area of hyperinflation, whereby you could see the area consolidated and with very adjacent, uh, very adjacent uh, normal, relatively normal lung. And then look at the pure thickening. Uh, so there is a significant pure thickening over the expected side because in acute, in, in acute uh, 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 consolidation, yes, they might have some degree of pure thickening, but usually it's not as marked as uh, those with pulmonary fibrosis. Okay. The second question is that uh, how I, how high the pressure? <laughs> so in, in pediatrics, you always have a uh, very scared, especially when you when you put out the PIP, right? So in, in especially a neonate patients, when you put out the PIP, uh, the neonates will be very unhappy when you put out the PIP as high as eight. Okay, because for them eight is very, very high. But uh, it's a slightly difference uh, in terms of uh, pediatric ICU. The PIP sometimes the PEP sometimes we went as high as about 18 in order to recruit the lung. I had to say that when, when you reach about 18, I also will feel very jittery. Yeah. So, and when one's going to start to uh, reach a higher pressure, the more important thing that you look at, not, not only the, the level of the PEP itself, but it's, it's about the hemodynamic of the patient. So how well the patient can tolerate the pressure, right? So for me, I usually go out as high as maybe about 18, right? But uh, depending on the uh, hemodynamic, right? So other... Very, and, and another very important thing is that you, you must allow uh, time for the pig to work, okay? You have to be patient. Huh? So you have to put some hydrocord on your hand <laughs> before, <laughs> uh, so that your hand is not itchy, you want to clip it up. Huh? So uh, allow some time for the pig to act on huh? because uh, sometimes because of the, because uh, in, in terms of recruit the lung, we are not, sometimes you are not depending on the main alveolar duct. We are also depending on the, the pore of cones. Okay? If you could remember the pore of cones, they mean the side hole of the alveoli, which is connected inter alveoli. Huh? So there's a side, a side hole, what we call a pore of cone. So this pore of cones, sometimes they are relatively small. So they will, sometimes it will need some time to gradually inflate the lung. Yeah. I see. Thank you for the answers. Let's see if we have uh, other questions. From the floor. Mm. So I, I, okay. So I assume there is no more uh, question. Okay. So again, I would like to thank Dr. Chor for your very kind presentation. So we've seen very interesting images of dynamic uh, ultrasound changes during um, lung recruitment. So uh, probably we can adopt this in our uh, daily practice. So um, thank you to our speaker and all of uh, our uh, audience. Uh, so um, let me see, any other question? No, okay, okay, all right. So, so um, I think let's then close the same uh, with Soral Aus. And uh, thank you very much and have, have a nice day. Thank you, Zikri. Thank you, okay. Dr. Chow. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.